Rumi said, uh, this ancient Persian poet, brilliant, beautiful poet, he said, uh, sell your cleverness and purchase bewilderment. It feels like bewilderment. It feels like awe. It feels like, uh, even as I think about it now, I can feel myself tearing up behind my eyes because I, you know, only I know what is going on behind my eyeballs. Um, it feels like so, um, so glorious and, and, um, and so, um, so sweet and so, uh, so trusting, so knowing, you know, there's, there's just this powerful knowing that you're not alone. There's this, uh, you know, that it's like there's a safety, there's a sense of that you're not alone. Um, I had this, uh, this great experience years ago. Um, there's a, uh, a friend of mine, he's on, uh, KTAR, a uh, radio station in, uh, Phoenix. His name's Pat McMahon, Irish Catholic guy. And, um, Mother Teresa is to be his guest, right? On the same day that I'm his guest. Uh, so we're in the studio, you know, and, uh, and, um, Mother Teresa comes in. Now she's about four foot ten, uh, maybe weighs eighty pounds, and she's there to talk about a homeless shelter that she slept in the night before to tell the people of Phoenix about this homeless shelter, and I'm uh, I'm there to talk about a book that I I don't know which one it was. It was ten fifteen years ago, and um, and um, so Pat asks uh, tells Mother Teresa, is there anything that I can do for you? And he's, you can imagine the bewilderment and the awe that he, this is an Irish Catholic guy from, uh, you know, living in Phoenix and Mother Teresa, a saint, is coming there. And, you know, he's just bewildered. He's beyond, beyond bewildered. He just doesn't know what to do with himself. He's just so honored. And he says, is there anything I can do for you? Is there anything I can do? And she said, no. She said, uh, I just came here to talk about the homeless shelter. He said, but Mother Teresa, he said, we have a, we have a 50,000 watt, uh, clear channel station that goes in every direction. And it was like he's got his ego involved. Like, I, I can, we can help you to raise a lot of money for your, uh, for your, for your work and your mission in Calcutta. And she said, no, no, I'm not interested in raising money or, or, or your radio station get, getting all. She said, I just want to talk about the homeless shelter. That's all. And he's exasperated. And finally, she's, and he's down on his knees, really. And finally, she says, stand up. She said, you seem so serious. She said, um, there is one thing that you can do. And he just stood up and he said, what? well, what is it? I'd do anything. He said, she said, well, tomorrow morning, she said, get up at 4 a.m. And she said, and go out onto the streets of Phoenix and find someone who's living there, who believes that he's alone and convince him that he's not. That's what you can do. And behind the feeling we're talking about here is this, this feeling of, a, of, a, of aloneness for so many people who are lost in the world, that, they, that I don't have like a connection to something greater than myself. I've come to believe that who I am is, is what I do and what I have and what, what other people think about me and, and who I am is separate from everybody else. And, and who I am is, uh, is separate even from what I'd like to attract into my life, that I'm separate from all the things that are missing and I'm separate even from God. And that there's, there's a place within me that knows that I'm not separate from any of that. That, that if there's no place that God is not or that source is not or that the energy that provides that is always giving and always creating is not, if there's no place that it is not, then it has to be in me. I know that. And if there's no place that it's not, and it has to be in me, it has to be also in everything that is missing in my life or that I think is missing. It's there too. So that in some mysterious, invisible way, I'm already connected to everything that's missing in my life through something called spirit. And when I recognize that, that I'm not here as, as this human being having a spiritual experience, when you recognize that your essence is that you are, you are a spiritual being, having a human experience, not the other way around. When you really get that, I mean, not that you can say it and it's clever, but when you know that who you are is this essence, you don't see, there's no other, there's no them. There's no, nothing outside of you. You're, you're connected to everyone and everything. As the Native Americans, you'd say that no tree has branches so foolish as to fight among themselves.